And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. This is the official 2017 St. Valentine's Day Massacre on our wallets show. Welcome everyone to Progressive Discussions. Okay, let me just start with seven lucky bells for our show because seven is a very important number. All right. Everything we discuss politically is part of our series. Capitalism, or should I say crapitalism, in a conch shell. There's the conch. Let me see if King Neptune is online. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, no, no, no. I know I, I know what topics I want to discuss. Without a doubt. Oh, God. Heaven help us all if uh, Trump should ever um, step down or be forced out. Then we're stuck with that evangelical zealot freak, Mike Pence, that makes no sense. Pence, Pence, who makes no sense. Yeah. Oh, I know. I'm going to mention him. I know what he's been doing lately. They, were, they weren't shy about it either. All right. I'll talk to you. Yes. Valentine's Day is a, is a, is a retail scam. Yeah. Chocolate diamonds from Le'Veon sold at Jared are a bunch of bullshit. Diamonds are no longer a precious... Yes. I know. Diamonds are no longer precious stone. It's all a scam. Really not that cold out because of the windshield factor. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, um, they they lay. You see what they do? The girlfriends, the wives, and fiancés. They do what they do. What mothers do to their sons, and what daughters do to their fathers. I mean, fathers. They lay a guilt trip on them, and uh, the retail industry has uh, brainwashed them and uh, and arranged it so the guilt trip. You know, is like um, tied into sex. I think I, in terms of the girlfriends and the wives. Yeah, yeah, they withhold sex from the man because the men are like thirsty begging brothers when it comes to getting laid. They they desperate. They cannot boycott. Just like, yes, yes, that's true. Just like Americans cannot boycott uh, a pr uh, products when they're being price gouged. That's right. Can't they don't boycott. They don't boy, they're begging brothers. They're thirsty, pathetic, pusillanimous pipsqueaks is what they are. So they, they allow the guilt trip of Valentine's Day to, to, to really sink in. And uh, that's how the retail scumbags um, get, maybe Zionist control, uh, uh, get men to part with money they may not have. Yes. And the uh, the thirsty sycophant uh, suck-ups make it difficult for all men. Yes, that is true. King Neptune, you are very wise. All right. Oh, I got some uh, some heckler mocking this show recently. You know about him? Yeah, I think I know him personally. If it's the same guy, a Joseph Sousa. Yeah. Well, you know what? Mr. Salza. All right, I'll see you later. Oh, I'll talk to you later. I won't see you later because I can't breathe on the water. That was Neptune. This is not a stick, sir. This is an authentic weapons-grade Blackthorn shillelagh. The lucky shillelagh from Ireland. It is, uh, if you hang it above a doorway, it'll keep away the, um, the malicious the little spirits, the little people, the wee people. See, it's got the shamrock of authenticity. This is not a stick. All right, now. I gotta make emphasis. Being that I did that little rant about the St. Valentine's Day massacre on our wallet, and there, here we go. Uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, you see? You're not looking at me! Look. St. Valentine's Day massacre in our wallet. The colored glass heart with the with the uh, artificial roses that last 
but they are, they last forever as long as you're gentle with them. Unlike real overpriced roses from a florist, how oh, pretty, which die, spend a hundred bucks on a couple of days. Yeah, you guys, poor suckers, spend like a uh, hundred bucks because the girls got to have the fancy ones with a long stem with the baby's breath around it. Oh no, they can't have the regular ones. Yeah, they last for for like only a couple of days, man. And there goes the money. Well, I want to give you a little consumer tip because I'm a consumer advocate. Well, we are. If you take dry flower, I mean, if you take any fresh flowers, fresh flowers, regardless what kind of posies they are, let's say red roses, take them out of the vase. Instead of putting them in the vase, you hang them on a nail. You know, you put like a like a plastic cable tie or a twist tie around the uh, stems, right? Hang them, up, hang them upside down on the wall. Leave them alone, don't touch them. They will become perfect dry flowers. And they will last much longer than if you put fresh roses in a vase of water. There you go. I'm telling you, I'm always helping you dudes out there. Male rights activist and consumer advocate. Chase P. Madonna. All right. Um, it is well established for people that are intelligent that um, capitalism was always rigged for the rich only ever since the Industrial Revolution. When people left their land, their family owned farms, where they made their own living and produced their own food, they left to live in a city and work for the man and depend on the man for his or her survival. Um, that's when the man decided to use child labor back then. Let me tell you something. There is nothing, there is nothing positive about capitalism for the poor and the middle class. The whole, listen you, you, you uh, stupid idiot, um, knucklehead, numbskull, imbecile, uh, tea baggers, as well as you uh, inbred redneck evangelical tea baggers. Nothing positive about capitalism is in it for the poor or the middle class. The very system. See, Satan works through cats, evil demons, and the cat just knocked over a fucking vitamin to interrupt my show. Where was I before I was rudely interrupted? He's going to puke. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. Satan, you know? Salem witch hunt. Remember when they used to, demons used to work through fucking cats? Well, they do it here. All right. Where was I? The very idea, the very system of paying out of pocket for every damn thing and privatizing every damn thing, it really sucks. A system like that, a system of government like that, is not only totally and completely for the rich, it completely sucks if you happen to be middle class or poor. Pay out of pocket my ass. Steve, Steve called me. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure, he wants to go out. Let's kowtow. Even though they're not cattle, let's count out of the fucking cats. All right, well, go ahead. Then he'll be out of the way. Go ahead, go ahead. get lost. Then he's gonna meow to come back in. Motherfucker. Maybe, maybe not. All right, let me put this back. Anyway, out of flags. Good. Anyway, what was I saying? Now, pay out of pocket sucks. Steve called me, the guy that won his um, social security disability case, and uh, he told me, uh, guess what? I have more. <laughs> I had more health coverage when I fucking uh, was on uh, welfare and uh, with Obamacare and Medicaid. I had more coverage because uh, Medicare, the motherfuckers, it doesn't pay for a hundred percent of everything. And he had to get a take out a prescription drug plan, mm -hmm. which is from a privatized insurance company. Thank you, George Bush. Thank you, G.W. Bush, privatized insurance company. He has to pay premiums. He has not only does he have Medicare premiums deducted from his uh, Social Security disability uh, check, like a hundred and thirty some odd dollars, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Not only does he have that, he has to, he has an additional thirty-five dollars deducted for the fucking Part prescription D. drug plan. Part D. And D. if it's if it's a well-known company like Aetna, guess what? Uh -huh. It's like forty bucks a month. So he picked uh, First Health. Fuck you, United States government run by conservative Republicans. Like my grandfather was so, so right. And corporatist Democrats. And corporatist blue dog Democrats. Oh, by the way, when we go to lunch, you're going to see a list and the names and the photos of the Democrats that have uh, supported and voted to approve of uh, Donald Trump's uh, cabinet selections. Ah, how about that? It's how about that that good old FDR Democratic Party that's supposed to feel our pain? Oh, yeah. Well, my grandfather John Nicolosi was right when he said, "With a Democrat, you'll get a few crumbs thrown at you. A few crumbs, Crumb. uh, crumbs. With a Republican, you'll get absolutely nothing." Unless you're rich, because if you're rich, if you're born rich, you don't need any help from anybody. That's why they like rich babies. Now, if you're in the womb, they fight like hell for you. Oh, Once yeah. you're born, hey, baby, what? You're not rich, you don't have a silver spoon in your mouth, I notice. If you're poor, you're a middle class baby, get back in the womb. You're a bum, you're a moacher, you're a freeloader. But that doesn't, that doesn't, um, they don't, there's no disclaimer that says they, these right-wing politicians are the biggest moochers and freeloaders of all. And they're crooks. Yeah. And, and people say, well, why is the military budget so damn high? Well, because this is the source of their bribes. I, they don't spend money, they don't want to spend money on NASA. They don't want to spend money on alternative uh, green energy or whatever. Mm -hmm. They love to spend it on the military. Mm -hmm. And I've come to the conclusion that it, it is because the military, the companies that make the weapons, this is the primary source of their bribes. There's something in it for them. When they spend tax dollars on other things, I don't think there's any bribe, Dr. Bill. Certainly no bribe element in in SNAP. Or 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 any anything that requires taxpayers' money. But when it comes to giving billions of free welfare to their rich buddies and to corporations, that's okay. When it comes to having a over fifty-six percent of the total budget for the military, that's good. That's okay to them even though there's a lot of wasteful spending in the military, oh. a lot. And I think it's because that is the source of their bribes, which is political corruption. The Pentagon has Capitalism. lost trillions of dollars. It cannot account for trillions of dollars. Oh yeah. Down a rat hole. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I, and I think I think the office that held the records was happened to be on the side where the uh, the terrorist plane went into the Pentagon. <laughs> so I, I was reading an article. Terrorist missile. A missile. A missile was a missile. There's no wings. There's no tail in that hole. It's a round a hole. Yeah, it's uh, that's the theory of uh, burning up the the uh, file cabinets on the side where all the information was. <laughs> you know? There's a lot of mysteries, like uh, why did uh, did a, a U.S. naval missile hit that Iranian airliner that killed so many civilians? How could they not know if they're in a ship that there is they a could. Co commercial airliner in the sky? They could. They know it. It's a bunch of bullshit when they give you a cover story. Well, they uh, it's like the old, uh, what is it, the Gulf of Tonkin? Gulf of Vietnam. Tonkin. Never happened. Never happened. The, the uh, Vietnam. They had a whole story. Jesse Ventura mentioned it many times. Uh, there was supposedly the Viet Cong attacked a uh, United States uh, vessel, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, they do things to get the American people 
behind the government to start a new war. That's correct. In other words, they want to build up morale and, and hatred. So they get they rile up the American people. Have now to do that. Second subject before we sink our teeth into these readings is um, well they 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 didn't waste any time. They're not shy in doing it. Uh, Donald Trump's uh, insane evangelical zealot cultist freaks that he chose, <laughs> like uh, like your Mike Pence and uh, Jeff Sessions and and the rest of them. They don't waste any time. There is like a nationwide series of sting operations against anything that has to do with sex. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, they do it every time. They consider... Every now this, Republican administration. Now, this is what's totally absurd. Republican uh, evangelicals consider prostitution, prostitution to be sex trafficking. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's such a big freaking crime that a dude wants to pay a hooker to get laid. Oh, that's so terrible. Why don't you work on the real kingpin criminals? Why don't you They're stop in the government? Why don't you <laughs> Why don't you stop focusing and wasting valuable taxpayer funded police hours? Stop wasting police man hours on ludicrous ridiculous frivolous so-called crimes like prostitution and and marijuana which happens to be the the most valuable uh, 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 most versatile and medicinal crop ever created by God you know but getting back to prostitution so what they make a big stink about it so what if uh, a man or a woman claims they're gay and they want to have a little hanky panky in, oh. in, in their in their own bedroom. So what if if a guy wants to pay to get laid? What is he supposed to do? And uh, 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 if he hasn't found that significant other, he's supposed to whack off for the rest of his life, or until he uh, finds a girlfriend or gets married. Mm -hmm. I mean, give me a break. It's stupid. It's like prohibition. I bet they were right wing fundamentalists. Exactly. Uh, evangelical freaks. Exactly. Alcoholic beverages illegal? Give me a break. Are you serious? Hey, another thing. It spawned organized crime. Organized crime is going to find ways to make money no matter what. Yeah, well. L look at, look at some, some southern uh, uh, gentleman that, I'll say, I'll say son, that has a steel, has a steel in his backyard, wants to make some good moonshine. Hey. They'll come and bust it up, man. Oh, yeah. They busted up recently. I read an article where the sheriff busted up the guy's uh, uh, electricity, uh, his his windmill. He built a windmill in his backyard. <laughs> so there there goes the idea. Hey, there of, goes... Yeah, of individualism. Of owning... Of self-sufficiency. Uh, 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 no, what about owning your own home? That's bullshit. Well, that's been but well, that's been bullshit for a long time. Yeah, they talk about the American Eminent dream. domain. You don't know nothing. If a sheriff can come on your property and say, uh, "Oh no, no," uh, uh, even though electricity is all <laughs> around us, like Nikola Tesla proved, mm -hmm. you can't make, you can't supply, you can't have a windmill on your property. Oh, no, what's you that? Can't. You're collecting rainwater in a barrel. Got to bust that up. You're, you're not allowed to. Co oh, the rainwater comes from the sky. Uh, corporations uh, own the clouds. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, okay. Can't collect rainwater. Can't make electricity. You got to be hooked up to the, uh, you know, like PSC and G. Power you companies. Power companies. Yes. You can't in Florida. Uh, that uh, penis-headed, dildo-headed uh, Rick Scott. He doesn't want people to be off the grid. It's illegal no, to be off no, the grid no, in Florida. No, no, no. Can't be off the. You gotta. You gotta be slaves to the to the man to the to the power companies. Right, exactly, because that's how their cronies make money. Cronies. Oh, privatization. Cronies. Cronies. Crony. That's the who magic think, word. Who do you think when they pro when a, a a state or city or whatever privatizes something? Who do you think they give the business to? Well, there has somebody to be. they don't know. Well, I'm sure to some. I'm sure to people in in the state capital building. Uh, know them really well. You're damn right they do because and the envelopes came. They, their palms are greased. That's correct. Their palms are greased. Um, 
nothing is done without that the grease to the, to, 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 to the wheels. Hey, it's like that in, in the entire entertainment industry. If you don't have connections, yeah, well, you, hey, well. you could be Joe Blow from, from Idaho. Idaho. And you could have, you could be a super talent, man. You could sing, you could you could make glasses yeah. shatter. How would you get a chance? Uh, hey, I don't in care. In the old days, you, the girls, they had to go on to the couch. The casting, chance. the casting yeah. couch. Come on. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not, it's not fair that a talent is wasted. Mm -hmm. It is not fair that a poor child that plays a mean violin can't go to Juilliard. Or you know, or or Hollywood, you know. I mean, if you're a poor, if you're if you're somebody who's not going to sell your soul and sign that contract and have the this the perverts in Hollywood control your life, you know, if you're an individual, and it, oh, but you don't get the break. No. Professional wrestling is is highly uh, political, office same politics. Stars. Same procedure. Same thing. The guy who runs everything picks and chooses whom he or she likes if you if you if you kiss his ass enough and he likes you he makes you a star you know it was it that way in porn are you kidding me back in the 70s uh, porn let's just take uh, uh, the book trade uh, publishing once upon a time you didn't get the copyright to your book if you sold it and you sold it for a certain amount. No royalties. That's how it used to be. Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. There are two, on most of the songs that he sung and whatever, there are two names as writers. Yeah. The actual writer and Elvis Presley, who did not write the song call, at all. They call but he was the big man, and therefore if you wanted to break... You cow to the big man. Yeah, well, okay. that's the problem with uh, the thing with uh, signing that contract in Hollywood, uh, as well as publishing, is that um, the guy in charge obnoxiously tries to uh, change your work. Make they do cha that Make too. changes to your work. They did it to uh, Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld at they the beginning that. of the Seinfeld show. Yeah. You know, they had a bad time slot. They did. They they were they were horrible in the ratings until they moved the time slot. But the uh, the assholes of Hollywood wanted to change their material. And uh, Larry David said, you know, Larry David, he grew up in a tough neighborhood in Brooklyn, and he he, he was very volatile. And he says, no way, you're not going to tamper with my work. Mm -hmm. I'm the, the executive producer. I'm the writer. You're not going to tamper with it. Right. And that's it. And then uh, you know they respected that, and then they they turned around and. Said okay, do it your way, and uh, and um, and then when they got moved to a better time slot, it took off. But the point mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, people on, office politics, people on top, they have their egos. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to analyze it as a psychologist would. They have their egos, and they need to be in power. Now, is that similar to the military dictator? Who uh, puts his face on, on on every street on a billboard? He's all over the place. Of course, you know and uh, love me, love me. Or we got, we ha we have a great uh, example of all of that going on right now with our president. Yeah, he's he, he's a perfect example of all of that. He he tells judges, uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, it, I don't care what you think, uh, what I say goes. You know, okay. yeah. You know, and I, I heard rumors, I, I hope it's true because it'll, oh my God, I heard rumors that Saturday Night Live is thinking of using Rosie O'Donnell to play um, Banyan. a, a Banyan. <laughs> Bannon. Bannon? They showed a picture of it and she looks just like him. Spitting image. Hey, you know, you know what kind of heat that would create? <laughs> oh, because they're like enemies. Donald Trump well, and Trump, Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, he, he, he hates her. Rosie O'Donnell, but that'll be perfect. Yeah. Somebody else mentioned another actress. They go, no, no, it's got to be Rosie yeah. because you want the heat. You want the, you want twit, you want Donald Trump. You want him twittering. <laughs> you want Twitter mania going. You, you go. want to get that Donald Trump Twitter mania going. Yes. You want the heat. Rosie O'Donnell will provide the heat. Yeah, yeah. So let yeah. me salute Rosie O'Donnell. I hope. I think I think she does want to do it, but I hope they select her. Yeah. Good luck. I hope you with the shillelagh. Uh, not a stick, a shillelagh. 
some some idiot from uh, Singapore called this a hammer. It's not a fucking hammer. It's a shillelagh. It's John Henry's hammer. May a leprechaun come and whack you over the freaking uh, cranium. Anyway, let us now sink our teeth into these readings. Hey, we're doing good on time. St. Valentine's Day massacre on our wallets. All right, let me get my medicinal. Okay. Let me get my medicinal tea here. Yeah. Because I, the shillelagh saw a lot of action because it was a very action-packed intro to the show. As a father, grandfather, and great grandfather. The fuck. I decided to attend the local protest by women worldwide who have had quite enough of Donald Trump. Yeah. In response to the historic turnout of protesters during and since his swearing in, both he and his spokespersons have now crafted a rationale for how it is that so many people have taken to the streets. They allege that the protesters are being paid. Oh yeah, they, they, they think George Soros is paying them to do that, yeah. But in keeping with the administration's modus operandi, the administration is just making this up. And everyone knows it. It's time for this administration and its supporters and enablers to realize that the president was not elected by a majority vote and the rest of us are taking to the streets. It's kind of like Al Gore and G.W. Bush. And only one paying is the Republican Party for its titular head. You hear what Donald Trump always says? That if you're a protester criticizing him, you're, he calls you a thug. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and if yeah. It, and if it's the media criticizing him, you, it's fake news. That's right. But if you say nice things about him, then you're the cat's meow, man. You're peachy keen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regarding 1984, a novel for the age of Trump. Oh yeah, definitely. I found Jim Beckerman's column amusing. Beckerman? Because oh, Beckerman. 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 He fails to see his own image in the book. Along with Brave New World, these books were required reading in the late 1960s. Yes, this is, uh, I, I am now speaking. That these are books that should be read by our young today. Along okay. with uh, Soylent Green, along with uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. These are classics. These, these are these are prophetic right. classics. And you know what else is strange? When you get a chance, viewers, watch the uh, I know there's a new there's a new move there's a new one out. Uh, you know you know the the Omen series? About Damien, the Omen. Yeah, yeah, there's a new one out now, but the but the second to the last, the 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 the, the last one that went to television, where um, a teenage Damien uh, was en enlisted in in uh, military school. Yeah. It's not a new movie; it's old. The company in that movie is exactly like Monsanto. Uh -huh doing exactly what Monsanto does. And guess what? Damien, the CEO, is like helped uh, Damien uh, in every every uh, inch of the way. He was on the side of the Antichrist. Hey. But, it, but this is years before any news about Monsanto came out publicly. Right. Unless people really knew about Monsanto way back when. So they, you know, well, there have been a lot of um, movies that have criticized the corporations, stuff like Avatar, uh, The Fly, all of these. They, they, yeah. The corporations were the bad guys yeah. in them, okay? Because and, uh, of what they were doing. And of course, George Carlin's famous three-minute 
uh, uh, um, routine that it, it was is considered the best three minutes of George Carlin's career, where he really hits hard about who really runs this country and this world and how they own us and mm -hmm. and we think we have freedom of choice and we think we have freedom and all this blah 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 but we don't mm -hmm. but we don't but he really goes to town uh, but this is all yeah, even even the late Frank Zappa was very um, <coughs> progressive and prophetic yeah, well. in many of things he's he says that um, I think he's the one that said the US government is uh, just a big oil company with a military. Bingo! What did uh, Schmedley Butler, Major General Schmedley Wars Butler, a say? Wars a racket. Wars a racket. He was a uh, he was a shill for the corporations. Jesse Ventura mentioned Schmedley but 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 Butler all the time. Yeah, well, yeah. he was on the inside. He knew what the hell was going on. And, and, and definitely buy Jesse Ventura's book, uh, the uh, uh, Marijuana Manifesto. I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. I'm still looking for Bernie's. Oh yeah, Bernie's, uh, uh, his post-election book that he came right. out with, right? Yeah, I'm waiting for the price to go down. Well, you know. I don't know. I don't pay, uh, you know, uh, no, 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 for no. books. No. Bernie Sanders um, is everywhere working very hard, <laughs> whereas Hillary Clinton is kind of like uh, on hiatus. And uh, but Bernie's out there. The only thing I don't agree with is Bernie says we 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 have to uh, continue. We can't be too rough with the enemy. We gotta uh, where. We're fighting for everyone's rights. Hold on. We're fighting for everyone's rights, both good and bad, but I disagree because that pacifist uh, hipster attitude is what caused Elizabeth Warren, Senator Elizabeth Warren, to get shut down by the ugly turtle face Mitch McConnell. Her, that liberal pacifist cause her to dummy up like Archie Bunker would say. But Bernie came back and uh, went to bat for her. Well they all did. Yeah. A whole bunch of them read the same letter. Nobody stopped them. Chuck Schumer? Schumer too I believe. But a, a, a whole bunch of Democrats. Well they were pissed. Yeah but they read the same letter and nothing happened to them. Uh, Coretta So you know it was only King. directed at her. That's the point. But well, they try to bully the woman. Well, they, yeah, but what is she going to do? She can't do anything. Raise her voice. Them. Watch me. Watch me. They shut her down. Tell them a raise chick. Her voice. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm going to read that the Coretta card. You, you shut me down, you ugly. You listen to me, you ugly turtle face. Hey, who, can, who else can yap? They would have sanctioned her. Who else can yap louder than a woman? I and know, she's but mad. they would have sanctioned her. But they let the they let all the dudes uh, read the letter, right? Yeah, later. But that, uh, that, what I'm saying is that that would have been a punishment, and it would have been put on her. But she's they're in charge. But she's a legal representative of the state of Massachusetts. Doesn't matter. She's not in charge. You got to get this through your head. People have to understand what. Why they have did. senators then? People, because the <laughs> Democrats only have 41. Or 40s. Oh, you're me. talking about the majority, but because, because Bitch McConnell was the majority Senate leader. That's correct. That's why she was censored. Oh, okay. We have to understand something. What when, when you put these uh, when you put Republicans pass in up power, progressives. they're in power. So so they they really can keep Elizabeth Warren from reading a letter. I mean, for they real. Did. And did she raise her voice? She she wanted the rest of the Senate to okay what she was doing. They didn't do it. Listen, they asked for a second. What what if somebody say, seconded? It. What if she says, "Hey, you're a senator, true. Well, I'm a senator too from Massachusetts, and I represent the state of Massachusetts." If she would have persisted, they would have sanctioned her. 
Mm -hmm. All right. You understand? Uh, okay. This is what happens when you put these guys in hey, charge. You ever see the parliaments in other countries? They oh, have, yeah. They, they have rumbles. Fight. They punch each other out. Oh, I love that. Well, that's what that law was in the Senate <laughs> to prevent. Could you imagine? When you impugn can, or insult another senator. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a Democrat grabbing a ugly turtle face and just jabbing him a dozen times to the face? Oh, that would be better than sex. Well, That'll well, be that, better than sex. Yeah, but that guy would probably pay a price. All right, great. But he's an ugly piece of shit. Anyway, great. We'll yes, make, but you... You'll make him uglier. You are... You are trying to attend to him in ways that are going to yeah. hurt you. I'm, I'm trying to think, like, okay, you're a senator in a, um, in a, um, a developed, populated, <laughs> northeastern state that probably has a lot more delegates than this rural, redneck state of Kentucky. And you take this guy that goes, oh, 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 does a bad Jimmy Stewart imitation from a little itty bitty state of Kentucky that doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, electorates there, whatever. Electors. Electors. Kentucky, you know, insignificant little, little, little rural Kentucky. And this guy is going to shut down somebody from a popu uh, densely populated high electoral state that is well he's not it's not him that shuts him down it's the party he called for a second uh, he got a second and he got a third and fourth if he wanted it and they all said shut your mouth shut down. you cannot read uh Cor what's the name coretta, coretta scott, scott king coretta scott king's letter well you, what they say is you cannot impugn another senator you well, can't insult another senator, your colleague. So, why oh, do you think she keeps referring to them as colleagues? Yeah, why does she do that? To be nice. Nice? They're they're, they're demons. Anyway, anyway, uh, Coretta Scott. Well, it is Black History Month. What the hell? She probably figured it was very appropriate to read. She was trying to give them a little history about Jeff Sessions. Ah, ah. They the, don't want to hear it. The man they want, uh, the, because they want who they want, uh, the, regardless how tainted, how tainted these people are. That is correct. You got a few of them in there right now with Tillerson, Jeff Sessions, uh, Voss, the Voss. And uh, somebody else. So is this what a, a kangaroo oh, is this what a kangaroo court is in the wild wild west? I gotta look up Webster's dictionary for kangaroo court. I wanna post that. Yeah, first, first I wanna see if it's in there. Kangaroo government. Uh, uh, what do they mean by banana republic? I hope I'm not asking a stupid question. Banana republic means a uh, a uh, very low down type of government. No scruples, no no, no rules, whatever, no yeah. yeah, of no uh, import or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, these books warn American society to beware of communist propaganda. In the past, the media put accuracy of news over sensationalism. Today, that has changed. The world's media, including those in this country, are controlled by those who have their own agenda of what the American people should know and think. The distortion of this news is a modern day 1984 scenario. It goes even further and deeper in American society. People have complained that Russia or China influenced the previous election. But it is the world mega information corporations such as Google and Facebook that do terrible damage. This liberal type of 1984-like fascism wants to replace our electoral system with the chaos of individual rule in their eyes, all have the right to do whatever they want and to destroy the cohesion of law and order. Yeah, well, we're 
Hey, I think it was Grover Cleveland that said uh, the American people will receive exactly the kind of government that they deserve. And they consistently do it on every single Election, Elec day. Election day. They did it uh, in 2014, November 2014. They did it again this uh, uh, 2016, November. They, they consistently keep on doing it. They keep on voting for the establishment. Or the so-called uh, Trump, which was supposed to be against the establishment. The only time he's going to drain the swamp. No, oh, he's draining the swamp, right? He's a. Uh, 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 well, what, what happens when you drain the swamp is all the bottom feeders are left. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it came from twenty thousand leaves under the I, sea. I think. I think the only non-establishment, non-career politician that was ever elected to any high office was Jesse Ventura in Minnesota. I can't think of any... Oh, of course, Bernie Sanders, the independent of Vermont. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Both Very few. That's why nothing gets done. But it, but it's them against the establishment, so it's like... You know, of course, the people, all you stupid uh, inbred uh, redneck teabaggers uh, that live out yonder, you, you, you cultist evangelicals, you keep on evoking in the right-wing establishment. And you idiots that vote for establishment Democrats. You know how many Democrats are obsessed with saving the Democrat Party? Yeah. They don't look outside the box. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like somebody who does the same things month after month, year after year, their whole entire life. They, they're not open-minded, they're not, they're not critical, independent, free thinkers with an open mind. Mm. They can never see outside of the box. Yeah. Uh, in line with that last letter that we just uh, read, yeah, right. a Philadelphia court has made the unfortunate decision to reopen the legal debate on whether the United States has the right to access emails stored on foreign servers if they belong to U.S. companies. If Magistrate Thomas Reuters ruling stands, anyone using U.S.-based internet companies will have to live with the knowledge that, as far as the United States government is concerned, it's America, wherever they operate. Unless you're a company that pays off uh, congressmen and senators, then, then you won't be investigated. <laughs> this is a dangerous approach that hurts the global expansion of U.S. tech companies. Privacy-minded customers in Europe are already suspicious of the United States government's cooperation with the tech giants. Revealed by the National Security Agency leaker Edward Snowden. Nationalist uh, leaker, excuse me, nationalist politicians in some countries, for example, Marine La Pen, of the National Front in France want to ban cross-border personal data transfers, arguing that such information must be stored on servers inside the Internet user's country. That does not appear to guarantee that the United States won't get at it. Last July, Microsoft won a landmark case against the United States government in which the tech giant argued that it didn't have to hand over emails stored on a server in Dublin to investigators working on a drug case. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit agreed with the corporation. 
ruling that Congress never meant the Stored Communications Act to supply, uh, to apply exter extraterritorially. Just two weeks ago, the court allowed the ruling to stand. The government may yet appeal it to the Supreme Court, but in the meantime, United States Internet companies have assumed that if communications are stored abroad, they are out of the reach of the United States government. Acting on that understanding, Google refused to disclose two users' data to the FBI. And the FBI went to court in Philadelphia. Unlike Microsoft, Google doesn't even know the physical location of a file. Its artificial intelligence-based system constantly optimizes storage. So bits of one file can be stored in several geographic locations at one time. Amazing. Amazing. Judge Reuter refused to be bound by the Microsoft precedent. In his ruling, he disagreed with it, arguing that as long as an American Google employee gets the data by using a computer located in the United States, nothing extraterritorial is taking place. When Google produces the electronic data in accordance <coughs> with the search warrants and the government views it, the actual invasion of the account holder's privacy, the searches, will occur in the United States. Within that logic, any information, public or private, that the U.S. government can find using computers on U.S. territory is fair game. And if the logic applies, the European Union wasted its time last year as it tried to establish an acceptable privacy standard for U.S. companies operating in Europe. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to worry about. You're, you're touting a Republican stand there. Well, I mean... If you have nothing to hide, why are they looking? Yeah, you understand? Like, like they're looking because it's becoming... Uh, because they can. Because they can. That's correct. Uh, in other words, they're invading your, uh, everyone's privacy. Right, because they can. And then, and then that is sort of tied into the First Amendment. Sort of. <laughs> you know, sort of, kind of. Sort of like the Fourth Amendment, too. <laughs> you know, it's like... Uh, uh, I mean, like uh, uh, some people's... Um, or um, they lose their job because of what they what they do or what they've said off the clock. Like if you're if you're off the clock, right, and you're off company property, yeah, well, what you do and what you say in your private life is really no one's damn business. Yeah, supposedly. Yeah, just like you know what a woman does with her body is really no one's yeah. damn business. <clears throat> you know. Um, And if it's uh, clean and safe and consensual, ugh, then it's a victimless situation. For uh, United States companies, this will mean a need to invent new private arrangements to protect European customers, the kind Microsoft proposed in 2015. It appointed Deutsche Telekom. I like it already. The data trustee for two data centers in Germany, making it impossible for anyone, including Microsoft itself, to obtain any information from the servers without permission of the trustee and ultimately the client. I love those German scientists, man. They're, 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 they're one of the very best. Such tricks may not stand up in U.S. courts if other judges agree with Reuter. Well, guess what? Uh, European countries uh, and, and other countries could just go like this to the U.S. Kiss my ass, just like Russia and China are off the dollar, along with Iran. The U.S. Supreme Court will probably have to take a stand on this issue. 
Google has already decided to appeal Reuters' ruling. And now that there are conflicting precedents, the government too will definitely want to pursue the battle to the bitter end. Waiting for a decision, millions of foreigners must decide whether to cut their losses on this front in the online privacy wars. It may long, no longer be okay to expose their lives to U.S. corporations. Those uneasy about the degree of the U.S. government's reach into their private files and communications need to start thinking about alternatives. No matter how hard it may be to replace Google, Microsoft, or Facebook, as the United States becomes more hostile toward foreigners under President Donald Trump, there's no telling why the U.S. government may be asked to collect information. Some travelers to the United States are already being asked to reveal their social network histories in a broad search for terrorist connections. What if the government didn't even have to ask? Hey man, if you're if you're rich and you don't pay your fair share in taxes, I don't like your stinking guts. I hate your stinking guts. I'm gonna punch you out, man. I'm gonna punch hey. you out. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Joe Salzer, this is not a stick. You are insulting and disrespecting the great Blackthorn Shillelagh from Ireland, the lucky Shillelagh. You are disrespecting the country of Ireland and all leprechauns. There's always somebody out there trying to mock what we do. St. Valentine's Day Massacre on our wallet special show. Can you dig that, brother? Or sucker, that's right. Can you dig that, sucker? Two watchdog groups. Oh, wow. Thursday filed ethics complaints against top... White House advisor Kellyanne Conway oh, her. for promoting Ivanka Trump's fashion line during a television interview. Talk about um, conflicts of interest, huh? Well, well she's allowed. She's, well, yeah, she's, she's allowed. allowed to have a bit. Ivanka? She's allowed no, to have no, a No, no, no. Conway did a commercial for oh, her. No, that's, that, that's not uh, appropriate. It's inappropriate. She did a promotion for the woman. That's kind of inappropriate, isn't it? Yes, it's against the law. <clears throat> Not appropriate or inappropriate. It's against the law. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Donald Trump's tirade against uh, Nordstrom didn't exactly hurt Nordstrom. <laughs> no. In fact, there's a there's a, a piece in the paper today that Nordstrom and all the other stores where her stuff is being sold. It's in the back. It ain't up front. <laughs> they ain't up front. Uh, well, you know, the Trumps are like, they're like a monarchy, you know, they want special treatment. Yeah, well, he thought, I told you, he thought that when he go when he went in to be president. He thought he's, he thinks he can get away with all of this stuff. Hey, listen, uh, multi-billionaires, there is such thing as being content with your multi-billions. You know, how, how rich do you want to be, you people? Oh, also, if you paid, I saved a very informative banner that I will show during our break of uh, a Dwight D. Eisenhower's 90% tax rate on the rich. Uh -huh. And it's quite informative. Believe me, it would not hurt the top 1%. Not one bit. Not one iota. Not one iota. Go buy Ivanka's stuff, Conway, <laughs> a counselor to President Donald Trump said on Thursday during a Fox and Friends appearance from a White House briefing room. I own some of it, she said. Oh, gee. Of I'm going to give it a free commercial of, here. Of course, because Donald gave her a nice job that she's not qualified for. Go buy it today, everybody. Yeah. You can find it online. Citizens for the Responsibility 
and Ethics in Washington and Public Citizen lodged complaints with the Office of Government Ethics, alleging Conway violated federal ethics rules that bar federal employees from endorsing products and businesses. Crew officials say Conway also may have broken a federal law that prohibits the use of public funds for non-official purposes. Oh, public funds were used. Oh, gee, isn't that a, a, a rarity? <laughs> Asked about Conway's actions, White House spokesman Sean Spicer told a reporters on Thursday Kellyanne has been counseled on the subject. He would not elaborate. Senator, I guess that means that uh, Trump, he took her to the outhouse and gave her a spanking. Well, Kellyanne's uh, photos lately have um, uh, have shown that she has kind of a blowjob looking mouth. But she, ah. she, she reminds me, well, she reminds me of uh, Ann Coulter, but she's better looking than Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter is like Medusa, you know, but she reminds me of her. She's got that Fox News, well, I, I take that back. Fox News has a lot of brunettes now, right? Yeah. They used to be all blonde until they were criticized, you know. Senator Cory Booker said on CNN. Very waspish looking, waspy. On Thursday afternoon. Right that he researched the law and it prohibits using an official position to endorse or sell merchandise. It's clearly what she said. She clearly broke the law. But he said that while the offense was serious, it was not a felony. And the larger issue is that President Trump has not removed himself from his business. See? Oh, he hasn't done that yet. No, no, no. and he has not produced his tax. Rate. No, Report. no, um, no white trust, blind trust, no. blind trust. No, no blind trust. No, no, no. I told you he's trying to get away with it. And ha and he has he hasn't so shown far his, he has. and he hasn't shown his tax returns yet. Right? That's correct. Well, he he actually lied about many of his campaign promises. There are serious conflicts of interest between him and the businesses run by his family members. And he clearly does not respect the seriousness of those conflicts. Well, he thinks his presidency is, uh, is like a monarchy. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he can, actually... He can get away with anything of right, that nature. Right, right. Yeah, he has quite an ego there. Trump organizations continue dealing in foreign countries arguing that it violates the emollients clause of the Constitution, which prohibits officials in the government from receiving gifts or other things of value from foreign states. Maryland represented Elijah Cummings, the top Democrat on the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, also called on the panel's Republican chairman Utah Representative Jason Chaffetz to formally refer the Conway matter to federal ethics regulators for potential disciplinary action. Chaffetz told NBC News that Conway's remarks were wholly unacceptable. Conway's comments came a day after Trump took to Twitter to slam Nordstrom for dropping his daughter's clothing line, complaining the department store chain treated Ivanka Trump so unfairly. His actions and Conway's remarks sparked fresh questions about the new president's commitment to separate his official duties from his family's business interests. The president said he has transferred management responsibilities for his real estate and branding empire to his two adult sons and a longtime Trump organization executive. But he has refused 
to relinquish an ownership stake in his companies. Anyone harboring illusions that there was some separation between the Trump administration and the Trump family businesses has had their fantasy shattered. Kellyanne Conway's self-proclaimed advertisement for the Ivanka Trump fashion line demonstrates again what anyone with common sense already knew. President Trump and the Trump administration will use the government apparatus to advance the interests of the family businesses. See? That's what I said he was in there for from the beginning. And there is something that he wants to cover up or wants to do away with. And he needs the power of the presidency to accomplish it. Well, they, well, they love to deregulate all companies. Well, maybe that's what will happen, now, yeah. you know, after they do that. Well, why do you think, why do you think way back when um, Linda Lunchbox McMahon yeah. ran for office in the, in the state of Connecticut, uh, either, I think it was Congresswoman or Senator, I, I don't remember which one, but, it, well, if she gets in, she can help <coughs> um, pass laws or, or eliminate laws that would hinder her husband Vince, Vince McMahon yeah. as profit company, will affect yeah. his profit, the company. Yeah. The rich have a never-ending obsession with never being content with the riches they have amassed. They always want more and more and more and more and more. And they seek the government to help them. It's like That's why you got all these stupid IRS laws that protect and deductions and everything for the rich, not for uh, middle class or uh, the poor. They must honestly think they could take it all with them when they die. Uh, well, like uh, like the pharaohs. Yeah, well, what they we got? can't. Yeah. We got room for uh, a small one, or a big one, or a medium sized one. Congress should use a rarely invoked nineteen. 24 law to examine President Donald Trump's tax returns. Speak of the devil, right? His tax returns. For possible conflicts of interest huh. and constitutional violations and make them public, said Representative Bill Pascrell of New Jersey. Pascrell, a Democrat from Patterson, who serves on the Ways and Means Committee, has asked the committee's chairman, Representative Kevin Brady of Texas, to order the Treasury Department to provide tax returns to the committee. Bill Pascrell is congressman or senator? He's my congressman. Congress. And your congressman. Your, uh, for northern New Jersey? No, for this area. The district? District 10. Well, Patterson is Passaic County. Passaic County is right next to us? Yeah. Well, he, he's got he's got several cities. Yeah. I mean, they, they gerrymandered, not the Democrats, the Republicans. Yeah. They gerrymandered everything around to protect Scott Garrett. No, but, thank, uh, thank God he's gone. Yeah. After privately examining returns, Pascrow is seeking 10 years worth. The committee could decide to share them with the full house, which would in, fact, in effect make them public. The 1924 law gives congressional committees that set tax policy the power to examine tax returns. It was used in 1974 when Congress looked at President Richard Nixon's returns. And in 2014, 
when the Ways and Means Committee released confidential tax information as part of its investigation into the Internal Revenue Services handling of applications for non-profit status. Trump said during the campaign he would not release his returns because he was being audited. After the inauguration, advisor Kellyanne Conway said he would not release them because the public did not care. Oh, that's like Mitch McConnell saying the American people are not going to stand for this. Like they, they, they know what God's thinking, and they know what the American people are thinking, and this uh, telepathic ability. As Crowell said, what happened in the election does not matter. This isn't for the Democrats or Republicans. And it's not to embarrass anybody. This is to make sure the American people know the facts. And if there are conflicts, they need to be resolved. Ask if he thought he would succeed, as Crowell said, he believes many Republicans in the House and the Senate are absolutely intimidated by the President. Individually, yeah, they probably are. But on a different issue, the top Republicans and Democrats on a key committee asked a top ethics yeah, regulator volume, please. on Thursday to investigate whether Conway violated ethics rules when she said in a television interview people should buy the president's daughter's clothing line. Should. Should buy it. Pascrell said he did not believe Trump has turned over control of his companies to his children. And even if he did, Pascrell agreed with the Essex officials who oversee the executive branch that that is not sufficient to avoid conflicts of interest. Pascrell also said he believes Trump is violating the emoluments clause which bars federal officials from receiving gifts or other things of value from foreign governments. We know that the state-owned enterprises in China and the United Arab Emirates are involved in his business and that his business ties stretch to India, Turkey, and the Philippines, and beyond. Beyond? Wow. Russia. Keep that in mind. And that's why he's so nice to Mr. Tuesday. Well, I, I hear Vladimir Putin had some pretty big meetings with ExxonMobil. You know, and he has, uh, he, I hear he's quite the businessman, Vladimir Putin. Oh, yeah, he has, he killed. One guy took over his business. I think it was an oil guy. Okay, as I keep saying, bring, bring a, a, a Kasparov on all of these shows, and he'll tell you the real Putin. Well, he was KGB, right? That's correct. And Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Taiwan. They also have ties to his business. Pascal said foreign governments are paying rents, licensing fees, issuing permits for Trump Organization projects. All of which could be used to influence the president. So this uh, corporate oligarchy has its tentacles worldwide. And in the White House. And in the White House. A Kraken. 
I told you. I told you. Uh, I, oh, I, hey, my hunches are usually 99.99999% correct. I told you. That's why I, I despise corporate CEOs more than any other humanoid. Well, they try everything they can, believe me. Oh, well, aren't they the ones that send the lobbyists to Washington? Of course. That's a you know, Bill. Um, yeah, Bill. Uh, William H. Morrow and his pro corporatism. If I get a no answer on this, I'll be very honest with you. If these guys think I'm walking away from this, they're absolutely nuts, as Ralph said. The calls we're getting, the calls other congressmen are getting, it's unbelievable. We never expected this. Calls? How come every time I emailed uh, Robert Menendez... You don't get an answer? I don't get, I never get a personal, I get an automated reply through the email. I don't, I don't get a personal no. reply, ever, no. ever. No, 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 I never do. So I don't know how these other congressmen and senators get calls, but in New Jersey, you're, you're ignored like you're like a non-entity. Members of Congress are not required to release their tax returns. But they must file financial disclosure forms, not required. similar to one Trump had to file oh, they make when he ran for president. Yes, they ex they exclude themselves from the basic they make, laws they make the that we must obey. They make the laws. That's yeah. why they get a guaranteed uh, raise every friggin' year yeah. that they don't deserve. Working less than part-time hours. 174 grand and all the freebies they get. They must outline their sources of income and the value of certain assets. Per year, 74 grand. Pascal, who is in his 11th year term, in the House, 11th term, does not regularly release his own tax returns. In January 2012, when he was running, in a competitive Democratic primary, he released his 2010 return after learning his opponent had also done so. It showed Pascal, now 80, had $267,518 in income in 2010. I didn't know he was that old. He's very spry for his age, isn't he? And he beat, uh, he beat Rothman, who was much younger. Yeah, wow, he's like a Bernie Sanders. He's, a, he's, he's sharp as a tack. Including his congressional salary and New Jersey pension from service as a state legislator, mayor, and Patterson employee. He and his wife paid 57000 740 in federal taxes, or an effective rate of 22 percent. He actually pays a lot. Yeah. Compared to you know. Compared to Republicans. These bastards. They're the the very moral and very Christian quote unquote Republican congressmen and senators. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! You know what? It's probably human. Prob the problem is always human nature. How do we know if if we miraculously had a democratic socialist president, if he or she would not become corrupt down the road? We don't know. Well, didn't the Soviet Union take Marxism and totally corrupt that and turn it into like a military dictatorship? You know. Yes, of course. Yeah, they did that. So, alright, we're going to break for lunch. And you're about to get educated. Simply hit the pause button, read and learn, and uh, and then you'll, you'll get promo after that. And uh, definitely uh, jot down our website links. 
and uh, click like to, to the Progressive Discussions Facebook page. Join our group uh, connected with that, which is Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Um, uh, also, go to our uh, Twitter page. Mega Life 21, the Twitter page, YouTube channel, everything. It's all there. It's all there. Tweet, 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 tweet. Tweedle. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very active, very active on Twitter. Twitter D and Twitter Dumb. Twitter D and Twitter Dumb is right. Gee, I wonder what uh, Alec Baldwin has in store for us uh, tonight. tonight on Saturday Night Live. You know, honestly, I think the Trump administration will make Saturday Night Live great again. Probably like, has already. Like, like it was in the old days. Because they've been doing it for several weeks now. Yeah, oh no. He's, oh, yeah. comedians are ecstatic with Donald Trump. Yeah. Static. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. 
So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay. All right, we are back. We are back. St. Valentine's Day Massacre on our wallet special show for 2017. So what were we talking about uh, during lunch? Uh, this new um, very pushy, obnoxious, greedy uh, uh, um, uh, s s scheme that... Uh, Retail companies came up with the automatic purchasing plan where they want you to sign up so you you have automatic purchases uh, occur every single month for a constant supply of profit for these companies. Yep. They, they never stop thinking of ways to get you to part with your money. Mm -hmm. Good old crapitalism. Good old capitalism in a conch shell. Anyway, let's, let's sink our teeth into these readings for the balance of the show. Seven lucky bells. I applaud. Former Governor James Florio's thoughtful analysis of the Trump administration's plan to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. I haven't heard from, we haven't heard from James Florio in a long time. No. The Economic Policy Institute's January 2017 report estimated that 1.2 million American jobs will be lost when the ACIA is repealed. It also concluded Hold on. That, that New Jersey would be one of the 15 states that would be hit the hardest by this repeal. 
thanks to the ACA, about 24 million Americans have peace of mind knowing they will be able to afford health care for themselves and their loved ones. And that an accident or catastrophic illness will not bankrupt them and their families. A study by the University of Chicago concluded that for every 20 million citizens who gained health coverage through the ACA, about 24,000 fewer Americans will suffer health-related deaths. It seems strange that the GOP, which prides itself on being pro-life, would seek to repeal a program that saves so many lives. Well, if you're outside the womb, they're not pro-life. Unless and until the Trump administration and Republicans in Congress have a better plan, they should show that they truly are pro-life and preserve the Affordable Care Act. Got there, Doc. What's up, Doc? Oh, did you hear about the 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 the, 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 the human uh, and the pig, the embryo, the human slash pig embryo for growing uh, uh, um, organs to be transplanted in with uh, by I guess by cloning the pig and human. Embryo. Yeah, we read that last week. Oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Lodi, New Jersey. Yeah. A man allegedly killed a snake outside the door yeah. of the exotic pet shop in Lodi. It, it, it must have escaped from their, from their stock must have been uh, part of their inventory, maybe. Where the reptile was purchased. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. He he bought the snake and then killed it? What an idiot. Why did he buy it? Employees at the store said a father and a son got into an argument over the purchase of an albino corn snake right. from the New Jersey Exotic Pets on January 21 before one of the males threw the reptile to the ground stepped on its head and killed it. And the argument was about the snake? The men left the dead snake outside the store. Yeah. The store's management retrieved it, placed it into a refrigeration unit, and called the Bergen County Animal Control to report the act as animal cruelty. Yeah, you're taking your your anger and frustrations out on an innocent creature that the idiot paid for. I hope he doesn't expect a refund. <laughs> and we're instructed to contact the police. The two men names are being withheld pending an investigation into the incident. Eh. According to the police report, the unidentified male, who was accompanied by his father, and arrived at the store to purchase an albino corn snake. After the purchase was completed, the two males exited the store and engaged in a verbal argument. 
believed to be over the purchase of the state. Well, the store, the store's prices, I know where the store is, the store's prices are very steep. It's exp they're expensive and uh, terribly expensive. The unidentified man became very angry. Enraged and hostile. Throwing the snake to the ground. At which time proceeded to intentionally step on the snake. His head and killed him. Hey, maybe it was the the son. Maybe the father is the one that bought it. Maybe despite the father, I'm so glad I don't have any kids. Oh man. The act was witnessed by three unidentified individuals. Unidentified. What is this, a jewelry heist or something? They're making a big deal out of it. It's all these unidentified people. The snake was then stored in the pet store's commercial refrigerator. A fine jewelry heist. Yeah, in the morgue. And in the morgue. <laughs> an NJ exotic pets employee who declined to provide her name. I know who she is. Stated the man who I, bought the snake. I know who she is personally. Has bought many reptiles. Many times in the store, and never, never took, never lost, never had a a, a a a fit with any of the other purchases. Never, never went on a tirade. Only there's something about the albino corn snake that set him off, right? And he lives out of state. Wow! Oh. It was a freak accident. Freak accident? Excuse me. Incident. A freak incident? How is it a freak incident if you throw the animal to the ground and step on it? How is that a freak incident? This type of incident... It's an incident, a deliberate incident. Never occurred before. This never happened before. Never. Yeah. The son came in with his father, bought the baby snake, went outside, and got into a fist fight with his father. Maybe the snake was cursed. Then he stomped on the snake. Got into a fist fight with his father. I don't know what it was over. Some people just snap. You know, well, said the employee. when I worked in a, in a retail store, I would say 95% or more of our, our wackiest, really bizarre customers were from Pennsylvania. As far as nastiness, nasty attitude. Are they like fucking inbred over there or something? I am from Pennsylvania. No, but they're just so ornery. Born and bred. But they On were the mountaintop. Like, ornery, ornery people. I think he should be locked up. I'm concerned about the other animals he owns. Gee, how is he caring for the other animals? If he, if he nonchalantly did this. The son appeared to care for his animals. Buying the proper lights, tanks, and other supplies needed, as well as indicating knowledge caring for reptiles. Well, buying the supplies that a retail pet shop tells you you need is not buying really what the animal needs. It is they they, they recommend what what is needed and then some and charge you very high prices for them because the store claims so that we are a specialty store. Our prices are high because we are a specialty store. We specialize in exotic creatures. But I, I, I saw what 
even um, online companies recommend. They want you to buy everything but the kitchen sink, man. They, 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 oh, yeah. You need this, you need that, you need this. And it's like, holy crap, for that little animal, for that little Pac-Man frog, get me a break. You know, yeah, breeders, they put their animals in in, in $10 uh, 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 plastic storage containers with substrate in the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Give but the man will not be allowed back into the store. Well, Bergen, Bergen County Animal Control did not return calls at press time. Lodi police say the case is still under investigation. Well, don't hold your breath for it to be finalized. I have, every time I leave a message on a county or state agency, I, 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 I very rarely get a reply. Uh -huh. I think people that have these, these cushy, um, possibly crony jobs spend their time jerking off all day rather than doing their jobs. Avengers. That? is voluntarily recalling some of its dog food after a drug that is used to anesthetize or put down pets was found in it. Really? They, they, should be, uh, they should be inducted into the Chisler's Hall of Shame then. Pentobarbital Yikes. was found in one lot of the dog food. Five dogs got sick, one died, according to the Wheeling, Illinois-based company. Fifteen states are affected by the hunk of beef a Jews recall. Oh, it's kosher? It's run by Jews? No, a Jews. Is sauce. One Jew. One Jew A sauce. Ah, Jew. Ah, Jew sauce. Oh, it's a kosher sauce. No, it ain't kosher. It ain't nothing to do with Jews. Oh. It's, it's French. A-U-A-U-J-U-S. Oh. It's French. Anjou. Oh, that's like that sauce they, uh, they, when they talk about prime rib of beef. Yes. Yeah. The, the Anjou sauce. Anjou. Anjou. The 12 ounce cans were manufactured June 6th through the 13th, sold in stores and online in Washington, California, Minnesota, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, Maryland, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Wow. You know, you really don't know what you're buying anymore. The innocent animals suffer for it. Shame on you. You're in the Chisler's Hall of Shame, man. As a precaution, Avengers is recalling hunk of beef products. Hunk of, hunk of burning Manufactured beef. the same week with lot numbers that start with 18, etc. The second half of the barcode on the back of the label says 20109. The hunk of hunk of burning beef. Woo! A hunk of hunk of burning beef. The ill and deceased dogs oh. ate from the lot 1816E06HB13. Oh, how devastated the families were, I bet. I hope they sued the crap out of that company. Really. Oh, fuck. The U.S. FDA... Oh, yeah, wonderful organization. ...is distributing information about the recall. Avengers suppliers of meat products are USDA-approved. 
the company said. <laughs> we feel that we have been let down by our supplier. The blame game. And in reference to the possible presence of pentobarbital, we have let down our customers. Sure did. You also put down their pets. <laughs> <laughs> the company said in a news release on its website, adding that it's the first recall in 82 years for the manufacturer. First time for everything, I guess. Evanger said it has terminated its relationship with that supplier after 40 years. Well, sure. Wait, wait until the lawsuits uh, come in, kick in, man. Unbelievable. That that you know that really is going to hurt that company big time. Well, yeah. It really is. It's an old company, huh? Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. if it's since it's that old, I mean, what's to stop something like this from happening with uh, uh, any well-established large pet company? Well, it does. I mean, I am had problems a while ago. Melamine? Melamine from from China. China. Tainted pet food from China. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me, but yeah. Unbelievable. As I listen to the news <sighs> and watch the protests, some of which are violent, and read letters, I cannot believe the hysteria. Our elected senators will not even stay in a room to vote. They admit they will drag things out on purpose. Yeah, they're, well, they're, they have puppet masters. Democrats blamed Republicans for obstruction, but now they have brought it to a new level. The recent vote for president was in opposition to Barack Obama's Changed America. When we found out what it was, we hated it. We were not supporting our military. The silent majority is awake. Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. <laughs> Whatever that means. Well, the Democrats could not get any lower. Yeah, but when you go low and you can back it up, then it's not bad. That means you're exposing the corrupt or the evil. As Thomas Paine said, to argue with a person who has renounced the use of reason is like administering medicine to the dead. I've, I've read that quote before. That is very true. That's like, um, I guess that's like trying to campaign and win over a bunch of uh, racist uh, right. uh, teabaggers uh, out down down south. Right. You know, you're just not going to do it. You're not going to win them over. Because they're freaks. They're inbred freaks. President Trump is doing everything he promised on the campaign trail even without a cabinet in place. Of the very few who kept his promise on day one. He is not a politician, thank God. So do not expect him to act like one. But we do expect him to fulfill his promises. Democrats are just sore losers. No, because if it wasn't for the Democrats that are left, uh, the, the, the poor will be doomed. More doomed than they already are. And the middle class. Does the writer have any idea of the blind partisanship his letter reflected? Allow me to plagiarize his missive. Changing only party and nominee names and adding a single bracketed clarification. The whining obstructionist Republicans are totally out of control. Still fretting 
over their nominee's defeat in the presidential election seven years ago. Their only goal is to thwart the, and criticize President Obama's every move. Well, they're, they're still fighting a civil war. Nothing else surprises me. The latest is objecting to the nomination of Merrick Garland to the Supreme Court. This is a man who received 100% Republican support in the Senate when he was appointed to the Court of Appeals 16 years ago. So, why the change of heart? It is clearly just sore losers not accepting their defeat. How sad. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps more open-minded readers can appreciate the irony in criticizing objections from Democrats who view the Neil Gorsuch domination as the fruit of Republican obstructionism. When some Republicans, a single year ago, were proposing to carry the Supreme Court vacancy even beyond the November election and through the next president's term. You know, you know this is real sad that the deportations have begun already. Uh, I read an article of this, uh, this uh, woman um, older woman, a uh, Mexican uh, a woman who uh, uh, has been in, in the United States for 21 years, has children born and raised in the United States that is behind bars, ready to be deported. Right. So what Bernie, Sander, what Bernie Sanders feared is coming true. Families are and will be separated. Oh, yeah. And, and Republicans don't give a fuck about it now now while well, I was I had a little debating uh, conversation with Ken create he says well what Donald Trump wants to do instead of having social services to help the poor he wants to bring back all the American jobs and put everybody to work yeah don't hold your breath Americans American poor and middle class don't hold your breath waiting for the all these jobs to return it's it's like it's like the replacement for Obamacare is nothing. <clears throat> you well, know, bringing back all those jobs requires a couple of things not not thought through. It requires factories. It requires people to invest in those factories. CEOs, the whole bit. And requires uh, it requires and products. It requires to make it a, a great disadvantage for companies to outsource, which means tariffs. Yeah, well, that what that is how you would deal with the companies that are in business today. When they bring back the products. But if you're bringing products. back those jobs that are lost, and the factories that ain't there no more, yeah, how do you do that? You ain't going to get one of your uh, top businessmen to invest in some uh, Humpty Dump town where GE closed its uh, factory about 20 years ago. No, it's, That it's, ain't going to happen. No, it's just Republican bullshit. It, well, me, it, it's just like, it's like, you know, uh, disappeared. We don't have a replacement for your problems. Exactly. Where we want to take away what you have. everything what you have, and uh, if you die, you die. I mean, uh, there, there, there's, there is no replacement for any s social service, and they want to come and steal your social security money. Oh, do they? And George Carlin, that was towards the end of his rant, and 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 now they're coming for your social security. Absolutely, and, and they'll get it because Americans don't care. I they, saw him last night on care. a Johnny Carson 1977 circa. When he had all his hair and not too much gray. Very skinny. Yeah, he had like brown, wavy hair. Yeah. yeah. And he wasn't as political. No, he got political. That's right. Yeah. I mean, he did a lot of societal jokes. 
and a lot of everyday stuff. McLean Stevens was on and uh, Navratilova. Well, yeah, McLean Stevenson, uh, before uh, Jay Leno started doing it, was doing um, Monday or Monday, Tuesday, reducing his hours. Yes. Because he yeah, was... Yeah, this was an hour and a half show. Yeah. One of the yeah, older ones. Yeah, usually like Carson gave himself an extra day off because, you know, yeah. he's getting older. And... Anyway, so anyway, so uh, yeah, th there are many great classical Johnny Carson Tonight Show Oh, I mean, uh, uh, Tonight Show um, uh, videos on YouTube where they have uh, mm -hmm. many uh, iconic, legendary stars. Sometimes the debut of these stars. I, I watched the debut of Ann Margaret on the Jack Benny show. She was a good looking young chick. You know? Well, these are old shows on uh, Antenna TV. Yeah. Well, in those days, when you're talking about <clears throat> the 50s and 60s, I mean, I know it's all the, all the, uh, the beauty queens and, and the sex kittens, whatever, they were all like, white. They were all uh -huh. white, blonde-haired. Yeah, you didn't, you, it wasn't multi-ethnic at all, <laughs> the women back then. They all were like, well, Miss America pageant was like that, too. Republicans finally control Washington, and they are licking their chops about what they can achieve. Tax cuts, ending regulations, stronger defense, but they are strangely silent on a centerpiece of their policy rhetoric during Barack Obama's presidency, federal budget deficit. Mm, they, could, they can fill their pockets more now than ever before. Of course they're licking their chops. If you're, if you're a greedy scumbag, you, you'll be licking your chops. Consider the dire warnings they sounded before their man made it to the White House on campaign promises of lower taxes and big spending programs. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell like to say that deficits are so dangerous that tax reform had to be revenue neutral. House Speaker Paul Ryan trotted out plans to balance the federal budget in 10 years. Well, didn't they talk like that when G.W. Bush was in? Oh, yeah. Texas Senator Ted Cruz thundered that the government like the ordinary American family has to stop living on credit. Yeah. Here are three predictions to bank on. Even in today's crazy quilt political world, <coughs> number one, if Congress passes a tax reform plan, oh gosh, it not only won't be revenue neutral, it will lose trillions of dollars. Well, if the middle class, uh, whom has who has the tax burden already, is burdened even more, then that middle class will shrink at an even more rapid rate until it, it vanishes completely. And then you'll have the uh, the desperate slaves uh, of the poor and the very rich, top twenty percent. Number two, the, rich, yeah. the budget won't be balanced in 10 years. And number three, <laughs> the government, like many Americans, will keep using its credit card. The Republicans are not going to balance anything. Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a break. That won't bar much bother President Donald Trump, the businessman, who once crowned himself king of debt. Do you, do you see how well, uh, historically, the track record of Democratic presidents, how, how great they do with the budget and spending? I mean, it's, o it's always, it's the total opposite of what Republicans do. Well, a Democrat has to come in and sweep up the elephant yeah. shit. 
I mean modern day behind Republic, Republicans. Modern day Republicans. We're not talking about really a great. Yeah. We're not talking about great guys like Dwight D. Eisenhower. We're talking yeah. about modern Republicans. Ronald Reagan and after. Dwight D. Eisenhower was the last Republican to balance the budget. No, well, because he wasn't a selfish bastard. People believe like that, that Ronald Reagan did. Ronald Reagan... And he that he never raised the tax. Both fiction. He's a He was the biggest corporate whore going. Yeah. He wasn't even a good Screen Actors Guild president from what Hollywood uh, uh, legends say. He was a, he was a dope there. Well, what turns Trump on are bigger, tougher military, and lots of infrastructure building. Well, he wants to bully other countries, including wasting money to build the Mexican border wall. Yeah, twenty billion dollar wall that you could you can take care of the poor lock, lock, stock, and barrel. In the United States, what scares deficit hawks like my uh, McGinnis, who runs the nonpartisan committee for a responsible federal budget, nonpartisan, is the prospect of a deal to give both Trump and Capitol Hill Republicans whatever they want. Don't they see the waste in the military spending at all? No, no, because if you vote against giving that money to them. You are not a patriot. You are a communist. Hey, did, yeah. they, did they ever look in Webster's Dictionary at the definitions? No. Sounds positive to me. In what? that scenario, Ryan would get the huge tax cut he has always craved, with most benefits going to the wealthy, and would agree to take politically unpopular cutbacks in Medicare and Social Security off the table as candidate Trump promised. Hey, uh, since, if, since capitalism is, has been always rigged for the rich, then uh, you could say commie, you can say pinko, you can say socialist all you want. Evil is evil. Good is good. Truth is truth and a lie is a lie. Trump would give the money to bulk up the military and build lots of roads, bridges, airports. Oh, really? Yeah. Infrastructure, you say? Really? Yeah. Oh, all right. To make Ryan's tax cuts permanent without touching the big entitlement programs that drive deficits, Republicans would have to take the axe to other domestic spending. Robert Greenstein. Go ahead. President of the Liberal Center on Budget and Policy, priority spearheads opposition to reducing spending on the poor and working class. But he has substantive credibility and works with some Republicans. He is warned. There are mounting signs that Republicans are planning harsher cuts than they have offered in recent years. Slashing as much as $8 trillion of non-defense spending over a decade. That would take domestic spending exclusive of Social Security and Medicare to about half the average under President Ronald Reagan. The impact, of course, would fall heavily on the poor. That would antagonize too many voters, including some who supported Republicans in 2016. The way to avoid the political trap while giving Ryan and Trump 
what they want, let the deficit go. The federal budget has declined from a peak in 2009 after the financial meltdown when it soared above a trillion dollars for four years. The Congressional Budget Office projects it will start to climb again after next year. And in five years, we'll once again cross the trillion dollar value. Erskine Bowles, Chief of Staff to President Bill Clinton, later co-chaired a bipartisan deficit reduction plan, warned that if deficits soar and interest rates return to turn of the century levels, interest expense alone could amount to a trillion dollars a year. That's real money. Yeah. That money would not be available to educate kids, make investments, and would necessitate, necessitate more borrowing from foreign countries like China. Trump has said he will not touch social security. That's what he says. Or Medicare. That's what he says, yeah. He has right. said he would cut taxes by three trillion to five trillion over the next decade. Yeah, how? Social services? Increase infrastructure spending by one trillion and defense spending by five hundred billion. Yeah, this privatized insurance crap is sucks. Health while, insurance, yeah. While this could increase short term economic growth, Bowles said it's a bad long term plan. That will be placing an extraordinary debt burden on future generations of America. Okay, so that should be it for this week. I just want to say my heart goes out to the people of Japan because uh, what the United States media does not tell you, has not told you, is the Fukushima situation has become much worse. And uh, I, for the life of me, I don't know why they built any nuclear power, power plants on an island country that has so many active volcanoes and lives and with eruptions and earthquakes daily. Seriously, there are more active volcanoes than you think. There are, there are multitudes of... They're, they're in the of, ring of fire. Of, yes. Yeah. It's really the worst country to build nuclear power plants on. I don't know how... The United what, States what, sold them on it, okay? We wanted to sell them nuclear power plants. Well... It all goes down to business. Well, they're going to end up with no Japan. Yeah. And no Pacific Ocean as it gets poisoned with radiation, which has already reached the shores of the West Coast United States. Yes, contaminated fish were found. Radioactive fish, yes sir. So, there we go. Profit before planet and the people. Right-wing crony capitalism continues to destroy the planet. And uh, all I have to say is, okay, build your bunkers with, with your underground cities. Guess what? Eventually, your food supply will run out. Your fresh water supply will run out. And what are you going to do? And your friends and neighbors will be knocking on your door. Of yeah, your but, underground bunkers. Yeah, but all they're doing is, is prolonging their inevitable death. You know, either you drop dead 
immediately or you drop dead in six months from the time that everything is wiped out. It's like you're just prolonging the inevitable. I mean, like, I get, look, it gets back to your, uh, the George, or George Orwell, was it? 1984 book? Soil and Green and all those classics. Even some Twilight Zone episodes uh, refer to uh, man's self destructive habits. <laughs> Rod Serling, you know, and uh, hey, knowledge is. At, at our fingertips, even hey, even the King, Ch uh, King James Bible is online. The dictionary, everything's everything's at our fingertips. But do people learn? Do they educate their minds? Do they apply what they learn? No, they don't. Anyway, that's it for. 2017 St. Valentine's Day Massacre on our Wallet Show. Progressive discussions. We'll see you next time. Of course, the Department of Public Works does the same thing every winter. They plow right down the middle of the streets, but when the cars leave in the morning, they never plow the snow on the sides to reestablish all the parking spaces. You know, when people leave in the morning, there, there's no cars. There's snow, but there's no cars. But they don't plow the side. Right? That's another crony job, right? It's a stupid job. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to cruise? You're going to cruise up and down the middle of the streets? You know, like and doing absolutely nothing? Unbelievable. And there's no parking. Gotta love the human race, huh? Gotta love them. No wonder God wiped them out once or twice. Once. Once. Okay. Well, if you're not if you're not counting. Uh this has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.